Hello, I am Bentham and welcome back to Factorio Railworld. Let's start off by uh, checking up on the uh, modules because we are out of the level 1 efficiency modules and unfortunately they've all been put into level 2 module production like they often are so uh, what I'm going to have to do is disconnect those so I can actually get some later on in the episode. Um, so after a quick check up on science and things, it looks like blue science has built up nicely, batteries have built up nicely as well, which is good, and everything seems to be running fine over there. So in the last episode, I tried to integrate the oil and um, the main rail networks, and I messed up and gave up and created this monstrosity of a system here, um, and I'm not happy with it. And someone in, in the comments last episode suggested that I use one of my standard rail loops to combine the two systems, and I thought, oh, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Why didn't I just do that? So today what I decided to do is I'm going to deconstruct all of this mess that I made last episode and I'm going to put in a loop that will hopefully just integrate the two systems nicely and conveniently without any horribleness. So um, what I'm doing here is I'm just getting the lubricant pipes out of the way because I've worked out where the rails can go and I want to make sure the pipes do not uh, block any stuff in involved there. Um, and then what I just quickly do is uh, sort of check up, check the lay of the land around the oil outpost because I'm going to completely revamp this whole thing. It's going to be um, an oil train overhaul. However, I think I've already had an episode called that, so I'm not sure what I'm going to call this one because this is this is what the episode's about. It's about completely overhauling this whole thing. So I start deconstructing rail, and immediately the copper train crashes into the end, causing itself a bit of damage, which was quite funny. Um, but it's all right. The other two trains I I've made sure will not um, try and get through. Uh, they've both safely stopped at stations uh, with no path errors going on because they can't get to here, uh, which was my intention. So I just started deconstructing all these bits of rail that I don't, that I, we're not going to be using because um, it's all going to be repositioned. I'm trying to get things to fit through here as, as uh, cleanly as possible, which is a bit difficult because the space can only fit one straight rail in. And the only way to get two rails through is to have them both going diagonally. But even that doesn't work properly. You have to use some like curved rails and have a little... Uh, wavy thing going on with that, but it's it, it's functional and that's important. Um, unfortunately, at this point it gets quite dark and I just completely ignore the night and carry on working. Um, so you can't see it too brilliantly, but hopefully it's not too bad. So what I'm doing here is I'm putting in the basic structure of the loop. I thought, right, let's just plonk it down, connect everything up to it and it'll all be fine and dandy. However, I, I based my positioning off this loop off nothing at all. I just plonked it down and straight after plonking it down I realised it's not going to fit in with the system I've got. In fact, what I need to do is shift it down by one. So um, after realizing this, I just deconstruct the whole thing and start again with it, shifting it down. We've got this light in the middle now, so you can see a bit better what I'm doing. Um, I don't shift that down, so it's sort of off-center now in its position in the loop. Uh, but I get it working, and I get connected up um, the the first bit, which is the, um, part, the, the bit that the, the copper train goes along, the part, part of the main line. And then I start working on the oil train, and from now on I'm going to call it the plastic train, because we have two oil trains now, it's going to be confusing. This is the plastic train, and the other one is the oil train. Hopefully I will remember that, I may not. I'm going to try to, um, and we'll see how that goes. But anyway, we start connecting up the, the stuff that goes to uh, the main base and to the... Um, I was going to say to the central station, and it does, but not uh, not in the most normal way, because everything goes to the central station in the end, I guess, apart from the, the new oil train, but... Uh, yeah, that's sort of where that one goes. So what I'm doing here is, uh, now that I've got the loop in place, I know uh, roughly where um, the actual uh, lines of the rail need to go, and I find that I have to shift uh, the lower one up one to get it to actually go into the into the right um, section, which is annoying. Um, I then forget this and actually put connect it up backwards. Um, I've got a certain plan about how this is going to go. Um, I'm going to integrate the, the oil train, the plastic train's routes now, so what's going to happen is they're going to both go along the same track, um, and then there's going to be stations for the two of them along the way. Um, so I'm basically completely changing how it was because uh, and it's going to be one-way system all the way around instead of the uh, instead of both of them having um, a one-way system with a loop and things like that. So yeah, I'm just completely changing everything that I've had so far. So I start putting in some uh, uh, some signals, trying to fit them in. Turns out I can't actually fit one the one in on the in on one of the sides of the copper train. The only way to do it is to deconstruct a vital piece of the track. Um, so what I have to do instead is have the track, instead of joining in the conventional way, I have to shift it along and have it go right round the loop to actually join up. Um, and I'm rapidly realizing that this is a very messy um, thing that I'm setting up here. Um, but I, I'm considering that whatever result happens, if it works using the loop, then it's marginally better than what I had previously. So I'm going to carry on 
and just put it in. Everything fits together perfectly on this side, of course, because um, on the top everything's got the standard system going about it. Um, so just at the bottom everything's wrong. Um, and at some time around here I realised that I've actually completely missed a vital um, thing about these systems here. Um, because you see, the main rail system um, operates in a clockwise fashion. Um, all the trains go round, all the loops clockwise. But the thing about the plastic train is that that operates anti-clockwise. And I don't real realise this until a long way into setting this system up. And what I'm actually going to have to do is make it so that trains can go either clockwise or anti-clockwise around the loop in order for both the oil train and the plastic train to get to where they need to go, to get into the same place, because one of them's coming from a clockwise, one from an anti-clockwise direction. Um, and it's even a bit fiddly to try and rearrange that because um, I guess I guess I could do it with with the the plastic train do something on on that end, but I didn't realise that. So at this point, I'm I'm well aware of the situation. And I start putting in a fix, and it is ugly. It is it, it, there's a whole crossover thing here, and this has to be included within the circle junction as well, which is um, a huge pain. So yeah, we we've got to have it um, a way to get onto this particular section. Um, clockwise or anti-clockwise and so that is the result um, but it works it works that's the important thing um, and I'm just gonna go with that um, there's a lot of sort of parallels between this and tomorrow's um, you know crafting challenge episode which I've already recorded um, there's a lot of setting up systems that look like an absolute nightmare but function so it's alright um, yeah there's a lot of that this week I guess uh, but anyway, what we're doing now is getting rid of the old loops and such, and we're putting in the, the one-way system. So this all, all this stuff here can go, which is nice, because the loops are very sort of bulky and, and get get in the way a lot. It's nice to get rid of it and just have a bit of a cleaner system. Though we do have a rail go, railway going r right between the, the plastic and the sulfur production and um, the oil fraction storage now, which is a bit of a pain, but it's all right. Um, so now we need to set up the, the bypass section for the oil train, because while the plastic drain is parked here, the oil train needs to be able to get past, because they're probably on different... Um, the, the, their um, cycles probably last a different amount of time and so on. So um, it's a pretty simple task, really. Well, well once I get all the uh, the coal uh, stuff out of the way, it's sort of blocking things a bit. But we get them um, all... we've got past all that, so there's a... Basically, this well, it's interesting because the quicker way is to go the way that the um, the plastic train parks rather than to go around it. But it's in case the plastic train is there, that's an extra bit that you can go around to just pass by the uh, the plastic train. So at the moment we have the oil train just sort of parked here, and we're going to leave that for now. It doesn't matter until we actually have the system um, connected up. And the thing is, while all this has been going on, there has been no plastic or sulfur getting to the the main factory, which is quite um, a problem, really. Um, we do need to do something about that. Uh, well, what we need to do is get this system finished, um, get the loop completed, so that we can actually get the the trains moving along it again. So um, we start. We've, we've got the the area. Well, we've got the station actually in place for the oil train now, and also the passing point that the plastic train can take. And we connect it up. So there we go. And I think immediately the plastic train sets off and comes barreling through. Um, any moment now, it'll. I think. Yeah, there it goes, just flying off. Thing is, at the moment, it's not got any other stations in, in its system, so it actually goes back to the main base again without stopping. I need to actually go and tell it. Well, I need to go and commandeer it actually, to uh, get it to go to the right place. So it, it parks up in sent in a uh, central station or nearby to it, and um, I just uh, take manual control and uh, take it round to where it needs to go. And the thing is, it's now coming into the station from the opposite direction. This poses a couple of problems. For a start, I need to put in a, a new station. Oh, that, that's, that's the extent of the problems, really, but it ha it's, it's quite a fiddly problem. So I set up the name of the station. I call it Oil 2. I realise later it's, it's probably better to call it something else, because Oil 1 is the name of the, the outpost for oil, and this is sort of the, a, a secondary base thing. So what I realise is that because it, the system is backwards, um, I can't line up the um, the station right anymore. And so I'm going to have to have things a bit off-center in terms of loading. So the first um, way I try doesn't work. The one, some of the stuff goes off the end, I think. So I shift it back to, um, and the train completely ignores me and tries to fly off to, to the main base, but I managed to get it to park in the right place. Um, and at the very least, all of the um, inserters can load onto the cargo wagon. So it works enough. Um, and if there's any problems later, we can sort that out. Um, so that's the, the plastic train sorted, and I've got the, some basic signals in which uh, should be enough to, to deal with it, or so I think. Um, and I make my way over to the oil train, and finally I put on the power suit so you can actually see what's going on. I've got the, the, 
night vision goggles because this whole time I've been working in darkness pretty much um, and I've just not been wearing the the night vision goggle suit but anyway we get the um, uh, the oil train into position and now we need to uh, name the station and I decided to call it oil base one instead of having it just oil one because there is an oil one so I tell it to, to park in the station and it flies off into the distance so uh, while I wait for it to come back I'll set up the loading of coal because um, that the old system for that was deconstructed of course there goes the plastic train operating nicely now get it's all working again which is good because that means that the factory is going to be functioning because for a while now it will have just not been uh, there will be no advanced circuits coming through, that's not good for blue science or modules, and they're quite important components of the system. Uh, but anyway, after the oil train turns up again, I can now get the positioning right for the unloading of the oil barrels. Um, and then I, while I'm waiting for it to come back again, I finish off um, connecting up the coal, so the coal will now be able to be loaded onto the train, hopefully. Um, so the train arrives and starts being loaded with coal, and I've got the... Um, everything set up here so I connected up the system and there we go we once again have oil and loading so that um, that probably means that everything's sorted now um, so there we go this is what our new system looks like and I just have a quick check up, up of uh, production and such um, and then I'll sort of zoom out and let you watch as things go so there goes the plastic train that parks up in its little alcove there and then once it's done it flies off here's the oil train that parks up there and both of them have passing points so that the, they don't interfere with each other uh, those are a couple of other bits of, of um, signals I put around the places to try and smooth things out because this is um, actually one of the few systems in in my big uh, network that actually has two trains going along the exact same route for a significant portion of the journey um, well th there's one other place and I've put the signals in there as well to help um, sort that out so anyway back to base where everything's been thrown into disarray because plastic's been shut down for ages so modules haven't made so much progress and science was shut down I think for a bit but it's, it's um, starting up again um, and we finally sorted out the, the oil train so I can actually get on with something else this episode. That would, you know, like We're already most of the way through here. Um, but anyway, what I'm doing now is I'm sorting out my power suit. And the reason for this is that um, I'm going to be going back around the lake. A few people have been asking me about this. I've said it in the comments, but um, I don't think I've said it in a video yet. I will return to the lake and I will kill those biters. I will go on a mission, probably in the final episode, to... Um, circumnavigate the lake for uh, well I would say for the second time I'm going to attempt for the second time and hopefully for the first time actually manage it I'm going to be a lot better armed and what I'm doing right now is I'm making some um, shields because I think I'm going to need those in my suits more than anything else really and maybe some exoskeleton stuff as well uh, so anyway what I'm doing here is I'm setting up some new production systems there's always more to do um, on this production line um, because what I'm now going to do is start on military stuff uh, um, because there's a lot of equipment that I just never really paid any attention to and I think it's time to employ it because this th this battle that we will eventually um, that will eventually come is going to be the biggest battle I've ever had in, in Factorio I think um, and I want to win this time so what I'm going to do is start having all sorts of different bits of production going I'm going to have a huge arsenal of weaponry ready to deal with the biters so what I've got here is I've got poison and slowdown capsules set up um, and I'm going to have, well I need to get the uh, the coal delivered by logistic bots um, for those um, so we get that all set up and they set off and um, start loading up some chests so we're going to have a stack of those each um, I don't know about slowdown capsules, I haven't heard much about those but poison capsules de people are saying are pretty pretty good uh, particularly when it comes to dealing with um, bases because they, they're good at just destroying all of the, the spawners and I guess dealing with the, the monsters that spawn from them as well which is quite good um, so with that set up we'll work on the next thing and what we're going to do is we're going to have grenades and we're also going to have rockets, I've already built a rocket launch for myself and um, now we need to get um, some ammo for it as well as some grenades to help to sort of supplement the explosive capabilities of this. I'm not sure what what is better between the the shotgun and the rocket launcher, but I mean, well, I think generally people prefer the shotgun because it is just sort of the most powerful in terms of damage. Um, but the thing about the rocket launcher is because it's explosive, um, the only limitation is how many biters you can fit in one square, and I'm I, I'm sure that's a pretty high number. And the sort of stuff I'm dealing with around the lake. Um, like there are ridiculously high concentrations of biters and, and spitters following so I imagine that actually the rocket launcher might be better than, than the shotgun for this particular um, task uh, so anyway I'm, I'm just getting everything in position here I've got to get coal loaded into the uh, coal loaded for the uh, uh, the grenades and then I need explosives being delivered for the, um, the rockets because we've got explosive production all the way on the other side of the production line it's pretty much as far away as you can be um, from this end which is no good really I should try and move it up if I can I forget what you need for it I think it's I think it's sulfuric acid and then something else but I'm not sure what it is it might be sulfur actually uh, but anyway we we just have it delivered by logistics bots because it doesn't matter too much about this the rate at which it's produced because we're going to need this stuff once 
we're, we're gonna go to the lake and we're either gonna win or die and we're not gonna need to come back to resupply so we don't need to, it to be made fast we just need it to ma be made by the time we're back so anyway I'm doing some weapons testing right now uh, finding out what they're like and I quickly um, conclude that the explosive uh, rockets are basically better in every way than the standard ones. I think the standard ones like do more damage to an individual, but the explosive capabilities of the of the explosive ones are just infinitely better. I also do a quick test of the grenade, and they look pretty cool too. So I um I, I approve the production of those. I let them carry on as they are, and I have a, a look around for some more stuff that I can make. And I spot one more um military thing I can craft. This is at this point I'm just doing it because I I'm gonna have this sort of weapons production area of the production line. Um, and what I'm going to do here is make mines. I don't think I'm going to be using these in, in the war against the biters unless there's some really serious battle that like I need pre to prepare for. Like I set up a mini base um, outside of the biter base um, and like defend it with um, mines and things like that. I don't know if we'll get to that point. Um, I'll probably die before then. So I set up some mine production as well. I, I realize now that I actually forgot to put a chest for it, the mines to be unloaded into there, but that's not too much of a problem. And what I decided to do now is um, unleash some more... Unleash? Well, that's a bit um, a bit too much for the, the, what I'm doing. It, it was um, logistics bots. I was releasing some logistics bots into the air um, just to help with the delivery of the um, the explosives and such. Um, I don't know if you, if you if you can really say you're unleashing logistics bots. That's, that doesn't make any sense. They're not really weapons. Uh, but anyway, um, we get all that sorted and I go and check up on modules as well. There's a lot more to... I, I need to gather a lot more because I need uh, um, a bunch more speed modules and things like that. I go and check up on uh, uh, science and everything's still fine there. We've got infinite um, uh, alien artifacts essentially. But while I'm walking along, I suddenly find that plastic and sulfur are gone. There's none of either of them. And this completely stumps me. And I go over to the oil um, outpost and I find out that I've been a complete nonce. And what I've done is I've set up a system where two trains can block each other from from moving onwards. What I had was I had um, a one rail block inside another. And what that meant was that while the train was in the inner one, if one train was trying to get into that block, it would be blocking the outer block, so the train inside couldn't get out. So both of them were just blocking each other, even though they weren't even like facing each other or anything like that. I, I completely messed that up. Uh, but I quickly fix it so that we don't have any sort of problems there again. And then I, I start checking up on the oil and uh, seeing how well the oil builds up uh, between visits by the train. Uh, it looks alright, but what I decided to do is just craft um, uh, another stack of, of barrels. There's only ten for a stack. Um, just to make sure that it, we were fully loaded in, in those terms. Uh, so with that done, um, that off goes the train and I can go and check out other things. I'm um, having a quick look over at um, plastic and such and I decide to um, add in a couple more uh, miners for producing coal. At the moment only one of them had run out but there was another one fairly close to running out so I just built another two more. And then suddenly a biter attack and it's over an iron outpost too and this time there's some damage being done. Something just exploded there as well. We've got some destruction going on and so I just start hightailing it over there as quickly as I can. The only thing is it's as far away as you can get from my base in terms of things I built. So I like I hop on the nearest train that I can that goes in the right direction, Copper Train 2, and then I hop off at the um, at the turn. Um, I damage the train a bit but it's, it's probably fine and I also managed to damage my shields quite a bit which unfortunately shuts down my um, exoskeletons for a while but they quickly get back online and I start pegging it as quickly as I can up to the outpost. There goes the oil, the iron train as well from there. So there would have been no point waiting for it because it was ages away. And it's agonizingly slow getting to it, the, the base, in normal speed. It's not so bad at three times, but I was really... It, it's a good minute that I was going there, trying to get there. So I arrive and it looks like we've got some uh, conveyor belts destroyed. And we've also lost a laser turret as well. Um, there was a, a conventional turret behind it, which managed to fare a bit better. Got a bit of damage and lost some ammo, but it's alright there, uh, generally. So, uh, it looks like it's alright, but it does show that um, the outpost is vulnerable. We need some more defences if we want to, if we want the, the outpost to survive um, for extended periods of time while we're not there. Um, so, partially in defiance of the, um, of the biters, I decided to set up another column of um, mining drills. Partially it's because also we had a few run out and we could do with them uh, boosting the supply a little bit. So I just add a couple more in, uh, get the efficiency modules into them, and then we can connect it up to the power, just all, all the usual stuff get some substations in and then one little power pole for that end one and then we're going to start putting in some more defenses so I start putting some laser turrets around quite a few of them um, just like uh, sort of being a bit sort of like the Hydra yeah you cut off one turret and I add five more that should be enough to, to deal with any biters coming along in the future 
Um, and what I also do is add in some conventional turrets as well, because it was a laser turret that failed um, in that particular attack, so it seems like a good idea to have a mix of the two kinds of turrets, so if anything goes wrong with power or whatever, we have two to, to help with. Uh, so, like, the, the, we've got sort of both the, the, the sort of areas covered. And the thing is, it's the end of the episode now, but the train is miles away, and um, I've got some unfinished business here. There's the matter of revenge. So I decide that I'm going to finish the episode in, in this outpost uh, for one, so I shall say goodbye. Thank you for watching, and I shall see you next time.